Welcome to the Nature of Teaching Professional Development Webinar Series. My name is Lauren Timi, and I'm the Ag and Natural Resources Educator for Purdue Extension in Delaware County. Today's webinar will cover the units, The Great Clear-Cut Controversy. This is gonna be about a 30 minute webinar offering three lesson plans that will teach students about the bird communities and how they change after clear cuts, as well as how other animals respond to clear cuts and why. And then using all of this information, um, students will be pretending to be in a boardroom, educating folks on best management plans. Joining me today is Rachel Rawls. She's the Ag and Natural Resources Educator and County Extension Director for St. Joseph County. Um, and we are gonna be doing this unit together. So we will be going a little back and forth. Um, after that, I'm gonna finish up the webinar highlighting additional resources and the procedure to obtain your certificate of completion for this webinar. Uh, and with that, Rachel, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thanks, Lauren. Let's get started. All right, this is the great clear cut controversy. Um, as Lauren said, we will be covering lessons one, two, and three. Um, it, it's important to note that these lessons are easily done inside the classroom or outside the classroom. And they are also easily adapted for virtual classrooms as well. Um, we will talk about the targeted grade levels and standards um, for each of these lessons and the estimated time that each lesson will take. We will tell you the required materials for each lesson and we will show you videos um, about the hands-on activities and procedures for each lesson. So the first lesson, well, the first, all lessons cover um, the same standards. So this is great for grades six through eight, um, covering science and engineering process standards, literacy in science and technical subject standards, and science content standards. All of these lessons are designed to each be 60 minutes long. And this is a list of all of the required materials for all lessons, but we will show you the individual lessons as well and those um, specific required materials for um, each specific lesson. So for lesson one, um, we will require um, some note cards, um, a computer with a projector, internet and speakers, colored pencils or markers, and the provided materials that we have for you um, on bird, commu uh, bird communities and how they change after clear cuts. Um, we will also provide you with bird community data um, as a supplementary material at the end. So it's really important before you begin your lesson to cover um, different definitions with your students. Um, the definitions you should cover are canopy cover, clear cut, early successional, ground cover, habitat conditions, habitat structure, hardwood forest, sustain, and understory. And this unit also covers background information on timber harvesting and forest management. So this is just a page from your packet that talks about um, lesson descriptions for each lesson. Um, the one we will show you in just a second is lesson one, how do bird communities change after clear cuts. Um, and this is just a really good summary of what this lesson covers. So now we're going to watch the video um, that I have made on how bird communities change after clear cuts. Hi, my name is Rachel Rawls and I am the Agriculture and Natural Resources Educator in St. Joseph County. Today, I will be showing you how to do the activities for Lesson 1, How Do Bird Communities Change After Clear Cuts for the Great Clear Cut Controversy Unit. These activities use bird community data on populations found in clear cuts and in mature forests. In these activities, we will make qualitative and quantitative predictions about how a bird community will change 
after a clear cut is implemented. By the time you have reached this activity in the lesson, you will have discussed the importance of forests with your students, as well as why humans harvest trees for timber. You have also shown your students the short video on logging in Southern Indiana from the Indiana Forest Alliance and have read the hardwood ecosystem experiment background information. Now you are ready to begin this activity. Have students write down their initial predictions of what they think will happen after a clear cut harvest. It is important to remind your students during this activity that predictions can change over time. Just because they wrote down this initial prediction, they can still go back and revise their prediction once they've seen the data. On the following slide, I will show you my prediction of where I, I expect bird communities to rise and fall after I read the hardwood ecosystem experiment. Following the instructions on this slide, I've graphed my expectations for the bird communities in clear cut regions, the control region, and the whole forest from 2009 to 2014. This is the graph of my predictions that I mentioned in the previous slide. Your students will graph their predictions as I have here, and they will probably vary from student to student. As you can see, these are my predictions about what would happen without having seen the real data from researchers. I have predicted that the bird communities in the control regions will increase over time and that the bird populations in the clear cut regions will probably decrease over time. I assume they will decrease because they usually make their nests in trees and Without trees, I'm not sure will they will make a home. Over time, I expect this to decrease the overall bird community population in this region. And on the following sheet, I will explain my predictions in more detail. On this activity sheet, instead of using a graph to draw out their predictions, students will write their predictions and reasoning in the initial predictions section. Afterwards, you will show them what a clear cut forest looks like. I will show you that picture in a minute. While the kids continue to use this sheet to answer the synthesis questions, you will show them the real data from the hardwood ecosystem experiment. As the years of data progress in the following slides, the students will have a chance to come back to this page and answer the synthesis questions. Remind them that it is okay if their initial predictions are different from what the scientists found. As you're showing your students the real data derived from the researchers, allow them to use this sheet to revise their data after seeing year one of data. Reveal the rest of the data year by year and allow the students to revise their predictions after every year or two of data and have them go back and answer the synthesis questions one through three once they have seen all of the data. Here is a picture of a clear cut forest. This picture is found in the supplementary material at the end of this unit and is a good picture to show your students. This is the first graph that you will show your students. This is the number of bird species before clear cuts began. After year one, there is a slight decrease in the bird communities in the clear cut and control areas. You will start to notice in the second year, bird species have increased in the clear cut area while the control area saw no change. In year three, the bird communities in both areas seem to be around the same population. In 2012, something weird happened. This is a good time to ask your students why they believe there was a drop in communities in both areas. The truth is that there was a serious drought in the summer of 2012 and that affected trees as well. From 2012 to 2015, there was an increase in bird populations in both areas. Now that you are finished showing the data for all of your years of research, ask your students to go back and answer synthesis questions one through three. If I were a student going through this lesson with my class, I would have needed to revise my predictions. It appears that my initial assumption about birds leaving the area was wrong. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on how to complete the activities for the unit Great Clear Cut Controversy Lesson 1 
How do bird communities change after clear cuts? Great. Thanks, Rachel, for covering that one. Um, so next up, we're going to hop into lesson two. Um, as you can see here, you need a couple of the different supplementary materials. Uh, so the sp species information packet, a computer projector as well, clear cut poster, um, species cutout, scissors, tape, and also page 17, which is do I use clear cuts and why? Uh, and here we're going to have Emily Evers explain the lesson a little bit, and then I'll go through some of those supplementary materials with you. Hi, I'm Emily Evers, and I'm the Agriculture and Natural Resources Summer Intern for Purdue Extension in St. Joseph County. Today I will be discussing the activity in Lesson 2 of the Great Clearcut Controversy called Do I Use Clearcuts? Why? In this lesson, students will be able to work together to learn more about an animal and what environment it prefers. They will be able to learn more about how clearcuts affect animals and hear from their peers on what they were able to learn as well. Before letting students research their animals, you should review Lesson 1 called How Do Bird Communities Change After Clearcuts? You can ask students what they learned and what questions they might still have. You can also review the experiment they did and the results that they found. It's also important to review why forests are important. Next, let the students know they will be working in small groups to investigate how forest animals respond to clear cuts and why they respond that way. You can split your students up into groups of two to four students and let each group pick what animal they'd like to learn more about. The animals they can choose from include indigo bunting, oven bird, northern short-tailed shrew, eastern chipmunk, northern slimy salamander, timber rattlesnake, indiana bat, and eastern red bat. You can always choose your own animals, but make sure you find a list that responds positively and negatively. After choosing animals, you can let the students cut out the pictures of their animals or have them cut out ahead of time to pass up to your students. These will be used at the end of the presentation. Next, hand out the worksheet, Do I Use Clear Cuts? Why? and a species packet to every student. Here's what the hand, handout will look like, and the packet will be included in the supplemental materials list. Students will need to research from the packet in order to find the answers to these questions. They will learn how the species responds, where it lives, what it eats, and what environment it prefers. They will need to decide if their species would be able to live in a clear cut and explain why or why not. And here's a student example. After completing the handout, students will present their findings to the rest of the class. After their presentation, students will be able to tape on the clear cut poster, which is also included in the supplemental materials, where that animal would most likely live. At the end, the class will be able to see where all the animals would live in the environments they prefer. Here's the list of the supplemental materials provided for the entire unit. There's a link located at the bottom to download these materials. You can then end the class with a discussion about what they learned about clear cuts and how it affects animals. Thank you for watching this video on the activity in Lesson 2 called Do We Use Clear Cuts? Why? Great. So again, that's um, kind of a brief overview and Rachel, if you want to go to the next slide, actually. So as she, as Rachel mentioned earlier, there are teacher notes for all of these. Um, but this one also shows a few of the different pictures. And I think that that's really helpful um, when kind of investigating more. So right there is, again, the little, little description. Um, and then advance. And this is the uh, an example of kind of how that activity goes. So the students would put their picture of uh, their individual animals on the tree. And then, of course, 
take a, a nice picture of all of the students together um, at the end. And now I will share. So these are some of the supplementary materials that we discussed. Uh, so again, there's the species information packet, um, which includes the northern short-tailed shrew, eastern chipmunk, indigo bunting, oven bird, timber rattlesnake, northern slimy salamander, Indiana bat, and the eastern red bat. And so here are the pictures for all of those. As you can see here, they're really big, vibrant. Um, so you can see it on the poster. Here is the clear cut poster that you can see um, where they have gone through and clear cut. <laughs> um, here is the species information packet. So you have a nice and clear, uh, you can read exactly what it is at the top. Then there's the picture. Um, and then from here, there are different documents and uh, other supplementary materials that you might take a look at um, that will help guide the students uh, in making their different decisions. So there's the Eastern chipmunk, um, and here is the Northern slimy salamander, just as two examples. So again, that picture there, and then information and documents that will help students, um, help guide students through this lesson. We also have some other materials through Purdue Extension. So here we have Salamanders of Indiana, which is FNR 261. Um, so those also exist in here too. So more resources for you and your class. And with that, I think we're gonna move on to lesson two or lesson three. All right, thank you, Lauren. Yes, we will move on to lesson three. So lesson three is big management decisions in the boardroom. Um, the only required materials um, that you'll need for this lesson is only if you're using the assessment at the end, you'll need the letter to Indiana State Forester assignment and rubric, and I will show you that at the end of this lesson. So it's important to note that um, lesson three is not a standalone lesson. It's really important um, to do lessons one and two first because your students will use the knowledge and materials that they've learned in lesson one and lesson two um, to guide their management decisions in lesson three. Um, so if your students don't know what the word boardroom means, um, before beginning this lesson, it's important to go over that with them as well. And you can find those in the teacher notes. And now Emily Evers will show you um, the activity for lesson three, big management decisions in the boardroom. Hi, my name is Emily Evers and I'm the Agriculture and Natural Resources Intern in St. Joseph County with Purdue Extension this summer. Today I will be talking about the activity for Lesson 3 called Big Management Decisions in the Boardroom of the Great Clearcut Controversy Unit. After completing Lessons 1 and 2, students are able to participate in a mock boardroom activity, learning how to work together to create the best management plan for a forest. You can start the lesson by reviewing lessons one and two and what the students have learned so far. Answer any remaining questions they may have. Then ask the students if they know what a boardroom is and what happens there. Discuss with your students that boardroom meetings happen when important business decisions need to be made. Several companies get together to make decisions that allow them to reach their own goals. They all have to work together to come to an agreement and create the best plan. You can discuss with your students and relate this back to forests and ecosystems. Then the activity can start. There's a scenario created where the teacher is a farmer who has a large forest and wants to harvest it in order to buy a new truck. She is worried that cutting down all the trees might hurt the animals. 
The class will be able to hold a mock boardroom meeting to create the best plan. The previous groups from Lesson 2 can advocate for their species in the type and environment it prefers. Students will quickly realize that each person or group are advocating for different things and they will need to compromise to come to an agreement. The class can work together to come to an agreement and answer the farmer's questions. The teacher, who will be acting as the farmer, can lead the discussion with the questions listed at Step 9. The farmer will also want to remind the students that she would like to make money to buy her new truck as well. Once the students have created some possible plans, they should present them to the farmer and convince her why it's the best plan. If you would like to go into more depth, you could ask about a 10-year or 20-year plan. The lesson activity can be finished there or there's another optional project. Students can write a letter to the Indiana State Forester on how they think that the Indiana Department of Natural Resources should manage the state forests in Indiana. More information on that project can be found in the supplemental materials list here. The assignment and rubric is found there and can be found at the link at the bottom of the page. Thank you for watching this video on Lesson 3, Big Management Decisions in the Boardroom. So this is the supplementar, supple, supplementary materials um, G that Emily was referring to. Um, this is the rubric for the letter to Indiana State Forester assignment. Um, this is optional, but it describes um, the objectives of what students should be um, doing and learning and the instructions on how to write the letter for the Indiana State Forester assignment um, and then explaining um, the process that you used for your plan. Um, this next slide has um, some different criteria um, for the assignment rubric as well. Um, so you can use that in your um, optional assignment that is included in lesson three. Awesome, great, thank you. Uh, so thank you, Rachel, for joining me today. And also thank, thank you to everybody else who joined us for this Nature of Teaching Professional Development webinar entitled The Great Clear Cut Controversy. Um, teaching students about the effects of clear cut, how we can use that knowledge to assist with best management practices for forest land. So if you enjoyed this webinar, I encourage you to click on the card in the top right of your screen to visit our Nature of Teaching YouTube channel. Here you can view sneak peek uh, lesson plans that are directly related to the webinar you just completed. To obtain your certificate of completion for this webinar, please click on the second card in the top right of your screen. Here you will be directed to a short culture survey to provide us some feedback on the program. Once that is completed, you will be automatically emailed your certificate of completion. We hope you enjoyed learning with us today and consider participating in additional professional development webinars offered by the Nature of Teaching team. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the email addresses on your screen right now. But until then, thank you for engaging our youth with nature.